Is there anything Michael Crichton hadn't written about? Time travel, alien disease, gorillas, Japanese murder, sexual harassment, train robberies, and of course, dinosaurs. Lots of stories had a central theme. Science out of control. Technology gone mad. People dabbling in things they shouldn't. We make our own monsters now. Thank you, science. In 1998, director Barry Levinson showed us who the real monsters are in Round Thing. I mean, Sphere. We open on Dr. Norman Goodman, played by Dustin Hoffman, as he's being taken to the site of a plane crash in the middle of the ocean. Hey, is that Huey Lewis? Holy shit it is! They also bring in astrophysicist Dr. Ted Fielding, played by Liev Schreiber, marine biologist Dr. Beth Halpern, played by Sharon Stone, and Dr. Harry Adams, played by Samuel L. motherfucking Jackson. A lot of doctors in this movie. Turns out that the plane crash was a cover for the freaking alien spacecraft at the bottom of the ocean. Peter Coyote is Barnes, the leader of this project, and kind of an asshole. But he's got his team of egg-headed Avengers, so we're ready to go. Yeah, well, so you're saying the spacecraft crashed in the year... 1709. So you're saying the spacecraft crashed 300 years ago? 288. Get it! You're smart! Actually, they all are. Kind of feel stupid now. Let's get to know our crew. Why are the glasses a problem? You take any prescription medication? You know, once in a while, sometimes I might. In other words, she is so on drugs. Once you're at a thousand feet, your body will be pressurized for that depth. Decompression is a very real concept. It's actually pretty realistic to include it here. A lot of movies ignore stuff like this. I kind of dig the science. I only bring it up because we'll be talking about it later. Down we go. Those noises are the pressure of the water attacking the integrity of the sub. You know a little something about that, don't you, Norman? How the pressure can attack your integrity? Who Shots fired! I think these two have a history. You knew this was coming. Queen Latifah is Fletcher, one of our red shirts. It's never a bad time for a helium party. Oxygen is a corrosive gas in the same family as fluorine and chlorine, hydrochloric. They have to breathe a more helium-rich atmosphere for reasons. I so wanted the rest of the movie to have everyone sounding like Jennifer Tilly, but now they have voice regulators, so everyone is speaking normally again. <laughs> All right, kiddies, cut it out. The voice regulators are behind you. Put them on. This part could have been left out, especially since the helium thing doesn't really come up again, and it has no effect on the story. It doesn't really add anything, but it's still educational and, I guess, realistic? Any experts out there, fill me in? in place Has it occurred to by. anyone that maybe we shouldn't open that door? Is going in really a good idea? Of course they're going in. Just in case this place wasn't stressful enough. You know, the most toxic creatures on Earth live down here. Did everyone get that? This place is dangerous. I think the music can calm the fuck down. Nothing is happening yet. It's pretty plain for an alien spacecraft. Let's break up into two squads. We'll never cover the territory otherwise. Yeah, it will be easier to kill off that way. Why make him work for it? Something I also love about Norman's character. He's brought in as an expert in alien contact, but he's actually a fraud. He was offered some money to write something up, and he bullshitted his way through it. That's hilarious, especially since the government's been using it as a playbook, and Norman has no clue what he's actually doing. I can get behind this guy. Would this fall under the same category as G. Beth? I thought you knew I was married. Okay, Tootsie, you're on your own. They discover their mysterious alien moon language. Trash. Basura. Aw, these aliens are so emo. Trash. So, aliens speak Spanish. I guess they'll have to make that wall a little bit higher. You go back to spaceship? Basura! Ah! Keith Richards! What is it? Smokehouse Almonds? Just like a man to die with his nuts in his hand. 
Somehow, it's a 300-year-old American spaceship with family feud technology. Look at the dates. Two-year dates? Did we learn nothing from Y2K? Unknown entry event. Spring break, am I right? You didn't know that button released the peyote, did you? Whoa, that was trippy, man. We finally come to the namesake of the movie, a big gold ball of alien origin. I have to do this. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Have a nice day. We got one. I'm not falling for that. You're gonna show me some dirty picture to embarrass me. Hey, I have one too. Aren't they beautiful? Perfectly round. Powerful message. See? We just appreciate perfection. Oh, uh, don't forget the other part. Oh, yes. <laughs> Damn it! Come on, touch it, cradle it, but be gentle. Don't be afraid of it. Just know it's there. It's alive. There's something inside it. We're all gonna die down here, you know. Can you lay off the bombshells for a bit? My heart can't take it. In case it's not clear, let me spell it out. The spacecraft from the future encountered this gold ball that went into a black hole, traveled back in time, wound up in the ocean, and now it's Dustin Hoffman's problem. But nap time is interrupted when Harry decides to check out the sphere. Uh, what just happened? Oh, I didn't think. You didn't think, Norman. I didn't. So you have just screwed up our trip to the surface. Jesus, this guy is an asshole. You think he's gonna die soon? This seems to be the only reason to make a character this big of an asshole. Norman tries to rescue Harry, but he's seemingly okay, just really sleepy. Oh shit. Well, the aliens are a bust. The sphere is a mysterious but boring thing. What cool way to dispatch a character we hardly know? Eel attack? Scuba sabotage? Killer squid? Um, we're going with jellyfish, I guess. It's all a suit! Keep moving! Just keep moving! I order you not to die! Be more like Marlin in Finding Nemo. Why does Norman seem so okay with it? Well, she's out of here. Harry wakes up and eats. Mmm! -hmm. Guess what it is. What? Calamari! <laughs> I've never been terrified by calamari before. But what if you fed him something else? It's vegan! <laughs> with gluten! <laughs> and cilantro! Mmm! -hmm. Good though! It's Arby's! <laughs> I hate squid! I thought he would hate sharks more. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Matrix, we got a secret message on the computers. Well, this has a pattern. See? It's like a code. How'd you do that? How'd you see that? Try binary. I don't know what they're doing, but it's kind of cool. Hi, Jerry! So, aliens communicate through Twitter? This alien sounds like an idiot. Well, that's something to consider, a stupid alien. Well, I must have him. He's happy. What happens if Jerry gets mad? Chilling. Better get those nudes ready, to be sure. Now there's something out there, and the other red shirt is dead. Her body's been completely pulverized. You better run. Something up there is making giant Tic Tacs. Let's run like hell! If you hated calamari before, get a load of this thing. And it's over. Jerry, you've heard everything we've been talking about. It turns out Jerry can read their minds, and of course, this makes everyone nervous. I just need my alone time. Like in the shower, or right before bed, or during Baywatch. Why, what have you heard? This part was getting interesting and tense. Who is Jerry? What does he want? But suddenly, a wild giant squid appears, and this time it's more dramatic. Fire? Um, hello? You guys are surrounded by water? Problem solver! Barnes makes a terrible doorstop. He was kind of a jerk, so I'm okay with this. This poor guy's skull! My beautiful smart face! Well, Ted's a goner too. Now that makes me sad. I liked him. Jerry is an asshole, but apparently Jerry is not even his name. It's Bud, Mr. Huxtable. Harry is acting really weird and detached, almost as if he's responsible. 
Now Beth is acting weird. Drugs. There is a lot of paranoia going around. You didn't tell him what's inside the sphere. Going inside the sphere sounds like lingo for getting high. Did you go in the sphere, man? I'm still in the sphere, man. <laughs> okay, they got their little code wrong. Jerry is actually Harry, or rather, his subconscious. His dreams are becoming reality. They manage to knock out Harry with a cocktail of feel-good, but the attacks keep coming. But they're nocturnal. They're only dangerous at night. Why is everyone so unemotional? Drugs? Beth gets to send Norman on a little quest to not drown. You know, whenever I see a scene like this in a movie, I always hold my breath right along with them. In this scene, I would be dead right about... now. Now Beth's demons are attacking her through video conference. Harry's awake, and just in time, too. Looks like they all went into the sphere. And they're all causing these nightmares. Everything that we feel, everything that we think, just happens. Personnel must exit the blast area immediately. Bombs? Are you playing on hard mode now? And who triggered them? It's me. It still could have been worse. Oh my god. Escaping is tougher than you'd think when your panic changes reality. If they're changing reality based on their subconscious desires, and they want to leave, why isn't this easier? Just another blind alley in the maze of our mind. Illusion. Is it an illusion or is it real? Make up your minds, guys. Maybe he's right, Norman. No, Beth, we believe that we're dead. Oh, that's why. Thanks, Beth. Now wish me a sandwich. They make it onto the sub, but they're not going fast enough. Mr. Spock, I need more speed. They escape just as Genesis, I mean, the bombs, explode. So here's that decompression they talked about. They have to sit in here for a few days so they don't explode from the pressure. Anyone else wanted to see an example of that? What does that say about me? And people died. They better get their stories straight. I don't want to not be able to sleep, afraid I'm going to wake up and there's all kinds of weird things in my apartment. We manifested every mean, distorting, vengeful, paranoid thought you could think of. I bet I could handle those powers. Imagine the possibilities. <laughs> Worth it. That's a frightening thought. Yeah, no kidding. They decide nobody should have these powers. So... Because we have the power to forget. Forget. I think that'll go great at the congressional hearing. Did you or did you not destroy a billion dollar sea lab and alien spacecraft? We, we don't, don't know. know. But the sphere is cool with all this and bolts. Whatever, I gave you guys this cool gift and you piss it all away. See if I do anything for you guys ever again, ungrateful bastards. They paid for this effect, so they may as well use it one more time. So, think we have time for a three-way? And that was round thing, I mean sphere. Dustin Hoffman isn't your typical sci-fi movie lead. He's not blasting aliens, he's not tough, he's not particularly brave or macho. He's a smart boy, and that works for this movie. He's rather likable and relatable. That being said... Uh, I did something very, very inappropriate with you, and I'm sorry. Sharon Stone is like a bomb waiting to go off. Kind of fitting because she causes the explosion at the end giving them a complicated history where they had a romantic slash sexual past is refreshingly not used as a springboard to throw these two back into bed. They start as colleagues and they end as colleagues. The cast has some good chemistry and their interplay can be charming at times. <laughs> Ted and Harry have a cute rivalry about who's smarter. Instead of measuring dicks, we're measuring brains. It's easy to call Barnes a bad guy, but he's just an asshole. The real monster is, wait for it, man. Or rather, the shit we dream up. Not a new idea. I do like Elliot Goldenthal's score. It's got a sense of awe and wonder. Just a tad overdramatic at times, it helps build tension in a very claustrophobic and dangerous environment. Sadly, a few times it fizzles before something interesting actually happens. It's a very subtle, cerebral movie with occasional action and tension. At first, the premise was interesting. The story was fascinating. 
You had an alien intelligence that may or may not be malevolent. You had monsters roaming outside. You had personal demons inside. You had mystery. You had science. I wish. Which boils down to that tired, done-to-death concept, our worst fears made real. And don't get me started on Harry being Jerry. What a letdown. The science stuff might bore some people, but I eat that kind of stuff up. That said, exposition is thrown around mainly for the audience's benefit. But there's a lot dished out that these people should already know, and that kind of sticks out. What you described, that sounds exactly like a black hole, a tear in we the space. We know what a black hole is, Ted. Wait, I don't know what a black hole is. You haven't had high school science watch Star Trek at some point? Even Disney made a movie about it. The movie builds to a conclusion that's utterly unsatisfying and unfulfilling. What was the deal with the sphere? Really? Our worst fears? That's the big shocker? But it's been done before. Buffy did it! To him Spike! Well, if I was down there, we'd all be naked at the mall. If you were expecting something like The Abyss, you may be disappointed. There is a sense of mystery and wonder that The Abyss had at first. But the more you learn about what's happening, the less interesting it becomes. Their worst nightmares, really? I was on the edge of my seat when I thought it was a giant squid, not Sam Jackson's thought squid. Registered trademark. Still, the squid scene is the most intense, chilling scene in the movie, and you don't even really see the thing. It's raining eggs, it's hard to get away, and vague images on sonar, and our heroes screaming in panic. It's a nail biter, and it just stops. All their fears seem to be aquatic in nature. They all fit in this environment. Nobody's afraid of spiders? Freddy Krueger? Being naked in school? Okay, that one's mine. It's a movie that wants you to think. People are terrible and would do terrible things with this power, whether they want to or not. There are no heroes, there are no villains, just awful, awful humans and a single outsider looking in. Sphere is a two and a half out of five. It's derivative, slow in spots, and the conclusion is a bit unsatisfying. There are some great performances from a really strong cast, some thrills, but you can't expect too much to happen in such a purposefully cerebral movie. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. You know, all, all that stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!